Hey guys. So this is one of my favorite chameleons, Flash. And I wanted to take him out because I wanted you to look at him and the traits that he has that help him survive or live in his habitat. The one thing that I really want to show you is this tail. Right? I don't know if you can tell, but he is really holding on to me with that tail. It's called a prehensile tail. And animals use a prehensile tail for balance, for holding on to things, for stretching way out and kind of, they can actually use that tail to hold on, to anchor them to where they're at. So a prehensile tail is a trait that only some animals have. A cat's tail is not prehensile. They can't use that tail to hold on or to balance themselves. But this chameleon can take that tail and wrap it right around my finger. And I know you can't tell, but he's holding on pretty hard. And then when he feels confident, he'll move and he'll loosen that tail up. But now I can feel that strength right around my arm. Watch what he does. He's gonna take that tail and probably wrap it right around me. Right, look at the eyes. His eyes are kind of, we say they have turrets. And each eye can move independently of one another. Here, I'm gonna put the phone down for a second. Come here, Flash. I'll put him on the stand here so we can take a closer look. So there's that tail again holding on to my thumb. I kinda, now if you watch him, he will probably take that tail and wrap it around what he's standing on. I think, I think. Let's look up at his eyes again. So you can see those turrets, those kind of, they kind of stick out. But if you notice, this chameleon's eyes can look in two different directions at the same time. Why do you think that is? I'm gonna ask you that question and maybe you can comment it to me later. And he does not have eyes like we do. He's looking down at this food right here. And, you know, the other thing he's looking at? All of these other chameleons that are staring at him. All right. So he's kind of keeping an eye on them. And then also this food. This Flash is a hungry boy. I bet he'll help himself. Maybe I'll hold. These are actually like little tiny treats for him. This is like nothing. I would give him something much bigger if I had it on me. But watch what he does. I know you guys already know how he can. Oh, he might be really distracted by. Come on, Doodle. He's like, I don't want these tiny treats. I want something much bigger. Flash, don't make a fool out of me. The kids want to see you eat. Maybe if I give him a whole bunch together. He's also looking at these little things down here. So if you guys can see these, this is what I do, right? My other kind of job per se 
is these chameleons will lay eggs and have baby chameleons. And right now, Mrs. LaFramboise has so many baby chameleons, it's a little crazy. So Flash might be looking at those baby chameleons and saying to himself, now that mommy would be a tasty treat. In the wild, chameleons and other other animals would absolutely prey on tiny baby chameleons. But in this house, he doesn't get anywhere near them. So let's see if I can entice him with a whole bunch of worms. Yeah. All right. Did you see what he just did there? So that's another trait that is unique to chameleons. We learned, a lot of you learned that bearded dragons a couple of weeks ago when we were learning about Spike have sticky tongues, but Spike can't shoot his tongue out. Spike has to be pretty close to the prey that he wants to eat. A chameleon on the other hand can be pretty far away. Now, what advantage do you think that would give a chameleon? Why do you think it would be really important for a chameleon to be able to be pretty far away? Come on. I know you see them. You're flashy. I love Flash. He's, I think, my favorite chameleon. He's just let, look at that. He almost got him off. So in that tongue, that tongue is just a huge muscle. And he can shoot it out really quickly before bugs even know that they're about to get attacked. And at the end of that tongue is like this little pouch and he can obviously get a much larger animal, worm, or he can get tiny things too. Occasionally he has missed the target and hit Mr. LaFramboise's hand or my hand and we can tell you that when he does that, he gets stuck sometimes. We don't try to do that very often because you know if you were running and you tripped or you kind of ran into a hole you could get hurt you could sprain your leg your ankle well chameleons are the same way because their tongues are so sticky and it's a big muscle if he does something that doesn't go according to plan he can injure it as well one more spike before we say bye to the kids. Actually, I want to show you his feet before we say goodbye. I'm going to put this one back. All right, but I want you to also take a look at these beautiful feet. Now, he does have toes. You see them there. He has like three toes and claws on that side. And sorry, my video is so jumpy. There's like two down there. But when he is walking, he'll use those. These are called pincher. It's kind of like pincher type feet. Let me see, I can show you what he's doing. But you can see how he can really get a good hold on whatever he's standing on. If it's a smaller branch, he's going to be able to grip that smaller branch. If it's a bigger branch like this one, he obviously can do a really nice job of that. Again, using the tail for balance and you can kind of see that tail is wrapped around the base here. And if I were to try to pull it off, I would kind of have to use some force, which I don't want to do because I don't want to hurt him. Now, the video that you saw of the baby chameleon, he was all brown. 
And if I show you some more baby chameleons, look at, they are pretty much all brown. Not pretty colors. All right, nobody's kind of standing out. So my question to you is, well, why? Why do you think the babies are brown? Look at that one right there. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. Why do you think the babies are brown, but the adults are so brightly colored? Now, again, these are adult males. Kind of show you some of the other adult males that we have. All right, we have one guy right there. You can see he's a totally different kind. He's more blues and yellows. And oh, I'll show you Mondrian. Mondrian's looking for food. Here's Mondrian. Oh, he's mad. So when they feel threatened, they're going to pop up. Kind of like the bearded dragon did. He has that gular right underneath his eyes that he will pop up and make really, really big to make himself look bad and big and scary. And those colors are kind of like a warning sign. Stay away from me. I mean business. And if you look at Flash, if they see each other, they will both do that. So there's Mondrian looking all angry. Flash is looking at my camera, not really. Oh, watch. Oh, there he goes. He noticed him. So what did Flash do? Flash puffed up. He made that gular nice and big. And he kind of also, look at their hands, their front hands. Right, they hold them up kind of defensively. And if I were to get them really close together, what they would do to fight is they would kind of hit each other and see who can get knocked off the branch. It's the person that gets knocked off the branch is not the winner. He goes home hanging his head. The one that stays up on the branch is in charge. And you can see, Flash a couple of minutes ago was green and red. And now he has completely gone red and orange. So they have the ability to change color, not based on camouflage. Cartoons always make us think that, ooh, if I put my camp chameleon in a different color room, it's gonna change that color. Or those funny kind of cartoon chameleons that you can put on all sorts of different backgrounds and they'll change their colors. Well, we obviously know that's not true. However, chameleons do not camouflage with their surroundings. As you can see, these guys look nothing like their surroundings. Instead, they change their colors based on their mood and their temperature. If they're cold, a lot of times they'll get dark just like the bearded dragon to soak up the sun. If they're angry, they're gonna get these bright kind of warning colors. Stay away from me, I mean business. If they're relaxed, Flash is still gonna look great. He's always pretty, but he's gonna be more of that calm green and red color and he'll just be kind of hanging out in his cage. Like a good example of that is this guy right now. Let me open the cage. Nothing's really bothering this dude. I am now, but he's pretty light. Not showing any warning colors. He's looking at me like, what are you doing? If I bring Flash over, let's see. This guy's a lot younger, so I don't know if he will get all angry. Sometimes the younger ones just, no, I don't want you in there. Oops, sorry. Sometimes the younger ones, oh, he's getting a little, 
So you can see that gular coming down. Oh, there we go. Watch his colors. He knows, I think, that Flash would win this. So he's probably not going to get, oh, he's surprising me. Look at that. Let's see how the tail curled up. His colors aren't as bright. Like I said, he's a different kind of chameleon too. He's a panther chameleon. They're both panther chameleons. But depending on where they live in Madagascar, they look different and they have different patterns. So this is called an Ankafi, and he comes from the Ambanja area of Madagascar. And he'll get brilliant yellows and blues and maybe some reds. Flash is called an Ambilobi or an ambilobe, and <laughs> he wants to reach for the camera. He comes from that area of Madagascar, ambilobe. So, I hope you liked kind of our field trip into the world of chameleons in my basement. Um, I have a lot of other animals here too that I can kind of share with you. I have a lot more chameleons that I could share with you too, but Flashes, probably my favorite. Come on. Come on. Some chameleons will bite. There are definitely some chameleons like Mondrian that I wouldn't really pick up. Right, if we work on him, he'll probably, he would probably learn to trust us a little bit, but Flash has trusted us right from the beginning. Nice little Ankafi. He's a good boy. I think he's pretty happy that Flash went away. Now the females, I'll just show you really quickly before I go. This is an example of a female. A lot of females will just be kind of pinks. All right, they don't get the same colors as the males. When they're ready to attract a mate this they'll get like bright peach like this guy and then when they're about to lay eggs they'll get really pretty colors like this one but the females just like a lot of other animals females are meant to not be as flashy it's the male that gets the flashy color They're a little more drab, but they also change their colors based on their temperatures and their moods and whether or not they are ready to find a mate or if they are um, going to lay eggs. Mm, let me see this one in here. Sometimes chameleons can. She's kind of in there hiding. Some chameleons do do a nice job of hiding. Okay, my friends. I hope you liked this. It was quite a long video. I wasn't expecting it to go this long. But check out that seesaw activity like I talked about in the baby chameleon that is eating video. If you're interested in doing this, this is just a bonus because we kind of already have done activities like this last week. Go ahead over to Seesaw. You can draw your own chameleon or you can upload a picture of a chameleon from the internet and then maybe make those labels again that show um, what traits you learned about from this video and what you are also noticing. Look at that tail holding on. And I absolutely cannot wait to see what you do if you choose to do it. Miss you guys. Bye-bye.